Uh, which car stood out to me in 2023? A car that stood out to me this year was... I feel like my most memorable drive, undeniably, was... Personally, the car that stood out for me... Which car stood out? I've got to say, definitely the... This year, generally, I think the what struck me was the sort of overall level of quality in all the cars that we've seen. So I think that's becoming increasingly true year on year. I think cars are getting better as a whole. I think manufacturing processes are improving. I can't want to say it's kind of felt. It wasn't as explosive as some of the years could have been. I feel like it's almost cliche at this point to keep talking about how much electrification has already taken hold of the industry. People keep telling us that, you know, electrification and stuff that we should move towards EV and what not. We had fun, but just wasn't like super amazing. The fact that we are seeing electric cars in more market segments than before, we had the Good Cat and the Dolphin this year, both of which uh, really came in at a point where, I mean, at a price point that could rival, you know, entry-level cars like your Honda Jazz, Nissan Note. The idea that electrification is kind of coming to the, to the masses instead of being reserved for your premium brands. As more and more chargers are built, are installed, and more and more EVs are on the road, this makes it more acceptable for people. So I'm all for electrification, I'm all for electric vehicles. But if you, to, if you were to ask me to choose one car, I think it will usually be hot and spicy and it usually be ICE. But this time around, I genuinely enjoyed the BMW i5 as well as the BYD seal. Uh, which car stood out to me in 2023? I would have to say it's the Aston Martin DB12. I've always liked the Aston Martin cars, range of cars. They are sort of like a very gentleman car, you know? It's not too brash, not too in your face like some other brands. So I can appreciate something like that, something a little bit understated. The car that stood out to me this year was the Porsche 911 dark car. It's definitely my favourite car that I've driven this year. So it could have been a very simple car. Right, they could have just taken a normal 911 and just put some stickers on it and then charged an exorbitant amount of money. Because of the fact that it's not actually a very cynical car, right? It's a car that's really well executed. It's a car that does everything it wants to do. It feels so much more special for it. And I think partially also because I, I got to drive it in the way that it was designed to drive, right? Not just on normal roads, but I got to drive it in the desert. So it was very exciting to see a project that feels like everyone that was in it were very invested in doing the best job they could do. So I think that car was very special to me. I feel like my most memorable drive undeniably was the iX5 Hydrogen. Yeah, it's basically just uh, the X5 but electrified and using a uh, fuel cell technology to power the car. So that was definitely a very memorable drive. It showed to me how hydrogen is so normal, I guess, as an energy source, force of propulsion for the car. I've got to say, definitely the Toyota GR86. You know, they manage to engineer it so well. It's the ergonomics of it, the driving dynamics and everything. They really made a proper driver's car and that definitely stuck with me, man. The GR86 is a great car. Personally, the car that stood out for me, Mercedes's SL55. SL, of course, an iconic model. And this year, this car handles better. It's stiffer and it is one of the dying breed. It has that four litre, that twin to a charge V8, maybe gonna be the last of its kind. Which car stood out? Um, this one really kind of set a new bar for all other cars in that segment. It's the Toyota Velfire, the new flagship. Velfire is on the other end of the spectrum, you just go peaceful, quiet. Although I did push the car a little bit, but you never want to push the limits on that car. You just want to cruise very comfortably, very peacefully in your little cocoon of safety, and coolness, ventilated seats. Everything felt Perfect. Set inside there, it's like the perfect environment for that sort of thing. So it really set a new standard for all kind of MPVs. Uh, there are several things I'm looking forward to in uh, 2024. The first thing is the stabilization of uh, COE prices. I think right now it's just madness. Looking forward to COEs coming down a little bit, hopefully. Can COE go down further? <laughs> Please. A lot of people are hoping that it'll stabilize, me included. I hope that cut and fill thing does a trick in 2024 and after, perhaps. I know the government is really stepping in to um, nip the situation in the bud, but I feel like more can be done. These, these are tough times that we're living in, you know. 150k for a COE, wow, what's going on? Then, then, then that was a crazy thing to behold. Uh, second thing is my health. 
I mean, quite a poor shape, uh, at least for the entire year of 2023. I've got slip disc, that's causing a pinched nerve, and I'm going for surgery soon. So all these need to be solved, and I hope I can get all of these rectified by 2024. So that's definitely one thing I'm looking forward to. I think from an industry perspective, I think what's most curious to me is to see how much the China market expands globally and that of, of obviously also ties into Singapore, you know, do we have new brands coming in. I was just in Guangzhou and I must say that doubts may still exist about the, the quality of Chinese cars. I think there's no denying that they are a very strong player. There's a lot of money being put into to, uh, R&D over in China. So I'm curious to see how that plays out globally because I think they are also quite keen on expanding sort of their reach. Uh, beyond just Chinese borders. The food is super simply food. I hope that I won't be forced to, you know, drive all EVs in the entire of 2024. As long as they are nice performance car, hopefully manual and with a proper engine, I think I will enjoy them. I will love it a lot. I'm curious to see how Lexus will execute the LBX. Uh, so when it arrives, it's going to be their first Cat A model. And as we can see, how the European manufacturers have done, especially BMW, Mercedes, Audi, how they've done the Cat A models. It helped grow the brand. It helped bring in new customers. So I'm also curious to see um, what Lexus will do with that. Hopefully more hybrids than EVs. A little bit more fun before the 2030 deadline. Avante Hybrid. Avante Facelift. Hybrid is coming, I believe. We've already seen the new Facelift Avante at Komoko. And the CN7 is a good car. Porsche 911 ST. I think it's already been rolled out internationally. I'm not sure if it's coming to Singapore as well, but I think that sounds like the perfectly cooked up recipe for what an enthusiast sports car is. And I would like to see it in person as well. Even though I know I may not drive it. The last thing more importantly is hot and spicy cars. And I don't mean hot and spicy cars in supercar fashion. I mean hot and spicy cars like the WRX wagon, something like that, or sedan for that matter. Maybe even perhaps like the GR Corolla. More of these sorts of cars from car makers that are a little bit more attainable to the average Joe like you and me. And that sort of makes me excited. When I see cars like this being launched, I know that there's still some soul and some spirit in the industry. That's a very important thing for me. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you so much for your support, for continuing to support us, support our channel. Hope you've enjoyed everything that we've done in 2023. And of course, look forward to more great stuff coming in 2024. All of you who watch our content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to us. Thank you so much. Without you guys' support, none of this would be possible and I guess we love to make this kind of content. 2023 was really a crazy year for all of us. I think we really like experienced a lot and drove a lot this year and we hope that you guys have enjoyed following us along on that ride. So thank you very very much for your support. We sincerely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on TikTok at SG Karmat. And of course, a big Happy New Year to everyone. Stay safe, be well. Happy Holidays. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, my voice really a bit rubs. Too many cars, ah. Uh. How you feel about the cars that have been launched? <laughs> I know. I know. It will look better with the with the with the with the music and everything. I think that this year has been a very. Um, I have no feeling. <laughs>